Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Love Love Tuts, and today we're going to go more into the layout files in Magento and how to completely control them. So in the last lesson, I showed you just basically what the layout file looked like. Um, we changed uh, one small thing in it, and then we had our uh, popular tags, we had that show up at a different spot than it was before. So let's actually try something like that and look at that file again and just see a little bit more about understanding these layout files. So I'm going to go to my theme and then layout. Um, the one that we used was tag.xml. And now here we have this file opened up. And what we did is we changed the, uh, the default reference name to write. Okay, so as this comment explains here, what the this default block is, is the default uh, page. It's the default layout. It's going to load most of the pages. So uh, the reason it says most is because it's not all. Uh, we'll go into that a little bit more. It's not something you need to worry about right now. But this default is going to load on most of the pages. So when we say uh, the reference name of right, it's referencing another block. So what this is called right here is this is the handle. And the handle tells Magento what pages to load this stuff on. Uh, these handle names are set in stone identifiers that you won't have to change. Okay. So if you'll notice customer underscore accounts is one that we have below here. Customer account index catalog product view. Uh, these are all pages or types of pages that this stuff's going to get to load on. So in this instance, we saw before uh, for default, and it was referenced in right. Uh, when we first came to this, it was referenced left. So this is referencing a block somewhere else. In fact, let's actually see what block that's referencing. We're going to go into our layout file again and I'm actually going to go into the default ones that came with Magento under layout and then I'm going to grab page. Uh, where is it? Right here, page.xml. I'm going to copy it into my own project just like we did before. No, not like that. Okay. Okay, so here I've loaded up page.xml and this is where this block right lives. So let's scroll down here and you'll see these block tags and we're going to find one that says has a name of right. So I'm actually going to search for right. Okay. So this block right here is a block type. It's a core. Uh, its name is right. Okay. So what this code is doing, this reference code here, uh, sorry, right up here, it's saying reference the name block and then load up this block uh, using this PHP file as a template. Okay. So just like if we look back at here, we could see that we have other names. Let's say here's a block type page footer. So let's copy this and let's change this to referencing footer. I'm going to save this. Now let's refresh our page. And let's actually inspect the uh, code here. And we can see that our tags list, the same block that we had before showing up in the right is actually showing up in the footer now. Okay, so that should give you a little bit more of an idea about how to move these things around. So by using this developers uh, tools that we had turned on in the previous video, um, we now know how to find out what XML file our particular blocks are using, and we know how to manipulate that to change it to a different uh, block to put it in. For instance, we put this tags block inside of the footer block. Okay, and this might seem really confusing. And I mean, Magento even says this is an easy to learn XML uh, format. And sure, uh, it may look a little foreign, but once you go through these and sort of look at some of these examples, you'll get a little bit better of an idea exactly how things are working here. 
So let's talk about some of these things that exist within the block tag. So here we just have a block and it's using a template, it's got a name and it has a type. Well, the type is the identifier for the module class that defines the functionality of this block. So basically we're saying that this is a tag block of the type popular. So it's a popular tags block. The name is basically whatever the name that this has been assigned so that other blocks can make reference to this block. So this is the tags popular block. Just like we saw under page XML, we had block name right. So we're referencing this block here, just like we could reference this block by using tags underscore popular. The template is physically what template is going to render when this block needs to be rendered on the page. So let's scroll down here to see a couple of more blocks here. Um, so here we have a block, uh, has a label and an action. So this action, we're not going to go too in depth through these, uh, because what these are is they're, uh, they're used to control storefront functionalities. Um, you can use them to load specific JavaScript files. And for right now, I think it would be best to just look at different, uh, action types and sort of try to play around with them and see how it's working on the front end of the site. These are things we'll go into a little bit further uh, when we're doing more complex um, applications of these layout files. And then you'll also see this as we have list before and info to. These are used if you need to call the block from the PHP. There's some PHP that you can write uh, that basically says uh, the get child HTML and then it's going to have the block name. So we'll show you an example of that once we get into more of the PHP. But like I said, for now, you shouldn't need to know that. Uh, if you just want to be customizing what they have here, you should have enough to be able to come through. And if you don't want something to show up, you can delete these. However, there's a better way to do that. And in the next video, we're going to be going over the local.xml file. And we're going to be turning off a ton of those blocks that we don't want that come by default with the Magento installation. Uh, I'm sure you're aware of them by now. There's things like the PayPal logo or the uh, back to school thing or the, the dog picture. There's all these things that we don't, we don't need to show up on our site. So we can go ahead and turn them off with a local.xml file. That way we don't have to copy and paste all these uh, XML files just to get rid of those functionalities built in. Okay, well, I hope this helps. These XML files, like I said, they're just a little bit different, so it's going to take some time to just play around with them and really just try to try to see exactly what they're doing. If you need any reference, just check out the ones that already exist. Uh, we'll get into more advanced applications like writing your own um, in just a few tutorials here. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the video. Hit us up at Twitter, Level Up Tuts. Thanks for watching.